down and possibly get seated we'd like to start the evening's events in a minute or two if you could find your seats that would be great could this, be louder this gentleman over yeah, here louder. Jim Fernandez, you see what he's doing with the, the video if you'd like to get you and a guest or anybody else in the video we're going to post this sometime later I didn't think they can hear you. Can they hear? Can anybody? You might want to get them to pipe down. Can I have everybody's attention, please? Please? Okay. Shh. Can we quiet down for just a minute or two? Yeah. Try it again. It again? Got it. here in the back, you raise your hand, way in the back, okay, first of all, my name is Barry Arrowitz from the class of summer of 69, and we'd like as a committee to welcome everybody here to something that we thought we'd never pull off a year ago this month. About two years ago, I was sitting on a park bench, never thinking I'd do this as a grandfather, watching my youngest grandson play. They were playing tag, and he said to me, Papa, chase me. And I said, as probably many of you have said, Silas, I'm sorry, I just can't do that anymore. I'm too old. He came over and said, Papa, you're not too old, you're just wrinkled. <laughs> so that's the theme of the night. We're, we're not too old, we're just a bit wrinkled. I'd like to have, if you can hear me, everybody in the room who served in any of the armed forces of the United States to please stand up and be recognized. Also, I'd like to have First responders, including police, firemen, and EMT, please stand up and be recognized and thank you for your service. A reminder that there is free water and soda tables throughout the complex. Also, for you women involved, the two inside restrooms are strictly for you. The porta potties outside are for all the guys, so Please take advantage of that.
For all you women here, Sheila Hirschberg was invited but couldn't make it tonight. But I have a tape measure. We'll be measuring your skirts and everything up here for the next five minutes. I'm going to go walk around. All right. Good, good. I can see that one over me. Spring burner over here, which will be open later on tonight. Actually, it's been hard, Dennis, because hey, I gotta tell you, Jimmy. Uh huh. Want me to tell the stories about yeah. you? Yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Any any theories on who wrote 
the alma mater. It wasn't the big mystery. No idea. Now, I just heard today that somebody had a an older sibling, uh, and which was before Paney was even at the school, and they said that the alma mater was was already in place before he got there. Uh, but I don't know how verified that was. That was just somebody. The resume proof at the at the alumni house yet. They're not convinced. John. Uh, the other thing was the fight song. Right, that was it. That was his? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess. You wrote, rewrote the charts for the 100, right? I can't remember, did I? <laughs> <laughs> he asked first. I, I he asked first. <laughs> but, but if the orchestra or the band played the alma mater, somebody, because they threw all this stuff away. Okay, I don't know if that was me or not. I believe it was you. Maybe. You just wrote it from memory. Yeah, God. I don't even remember that. <laughs> yeah. You did it so quick. <laughs> Memory work. Oh, gosh. I'm over 40, so. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. And you, and you, let's gather some more crescendos and whatever, yeah. and let's do some more of this. Thank you, John. Thanks, Steve. I'm so proud of this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 I can see all you guys. Give me two seconds. Is anything okay? Make an adjustment. Make an adjustment. Hey, that's better. Well, you're not that sure. You're throwing some shade on me. That's right. You're not that sure. I didn't say that. <laughs> I was just quoted. I think he's got the Oh, that's today. much better. Well, Where are it's you? better for the camera. Yeah, I'll get over here and squat. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're good. Yeah. Let's all right. Get down to Steve's side. And he was the drum major. All right, so we're rolling video. You, you got to come in this way. All right, so here we are. We're even closer, fellas. Just like the band bus. Remember? Hey, who's here? Oh, it's me. And it's him. All right. Do you know what this is? You black. All right, so. What do you want us to do, Jim? Guys are all together. Go for it. It's a video. So people will see on YouTube. So here's all the, all the, the magical misfits. <laughs> the magical misfits that made it all happen. It was literally that one room that kept me in school and interested for three years. Bill, Bill Payne made it fun. That's right. Especially when he. Throw down his, throw down his baton and say, do it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> I'm done with you guys. And we were all like, uh oh, what do we do now? <laughs> okay, we're done. Yeah. Are you going to do it still or no? We can do still. Hey, hey Larry. This is all the positions. Hey, Steve. Let's do a still real quick. What are we doing? A still. And then we'll do a flip over. You know, and we would like with our right hands, like this.
gray, brown, and that thick and all that. I never heard the bass like that. In my next classical lesson, I said to the teacher, have you ever heard of this guy named Ray Brown? And he said, sure, he's a friend of mine. And he took out a letter from Ray Brown and said, dear Mr. Siegel, would you please tell your students about a class I'm teaching in UCLA called Workshop in Jazz Bass. That was my last classical lesson that they got. I saved $65. And I had rolled in that course and studied with Ray Brown at 16 years old. And it all stemmed from Bill King and not making me away from it. Oh, wow. So it was pretty amazing. That is pretty cool. <laughs> 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 Now, you played with Buddy Rich, right? Now, you tell us how that happened. Well, it was wild. I mean, I was playing in, in college. I was taking all my classes at L.A. Valley College and playing in the band there, which was a good band. Had a lot of great arrangements. And I was also, because of the, the band director there was Bill Payne's idol, Bob McDonald. And he said he learned everything about the band director from Bob McDonald. So, L.A. City College was where Bob McDonald was in his band rehearsed Monday and Wednesday. Our band at Valley was Tuesday and Thursday, so I enrolled at, at L.A. City and was playing in their band too. And while I'm playing in that band, John McGill just gotten off the road with Buddy Rich from playing lead trumpet with Buddy and came and started playing in our band at L.A. Valley at L.A. City. So when Buddy's band needed a trombone player, they called him for recommendation. And Johnny recommended me. So that's that's how I got that call. It was incredible luck. And the rest is history. You never know what contact, what circumstance will lead to something. You know. Yeah. And you know, I tell a lot of I do a lot of teaching, I tell all my students, it's not networking. We don't network in our business because it's too personal. If you ever feel like something as a, a stepping stone to further their career, it feels dirty. Uh, instead, if we look at all of our situations as artists, it's always about relationship building. We, never, we don't network with each other, each other. We build friendships and relationships with And that's really what it's about in the, in the world of art and the world of music. You know, as a freelancer, you're competing with the same people you were friends with, just by the nature of the business. You're all in the, you're all in the workforce and you're, you're all in the pool. But if you actively compete against somebody, that's it. That's it. And I, I've always been careful. I don't even want to give the impression of doing that, even if I'm not. But the, just the impression of impropriety like that is So I go out of my way to never appear on something for somebody to be trying to get their job for myself. Yeah, there have been a lot of people who thought that he'd take a man for himself. Actually, the good news is that there haven't been a lot of people. Because the vast majority of people in our business are amazing and beautiful people. It's the people who don't get what Alan is talking about that fall by the wayside. That's kind of the and good no, news. And it is true. It is true. You know, the cream kind of rises to the top. I was always told that, yeah. that there's always room for an open air. And the cream rises to the top. And it does, it does seem to be the case. Exactly. You know, all the great players are you know, consensus by people. You can go for it. It's a flip by one shot. So, yeah. You know, when I when I left Venice High, I, I gave up the trumpet because, because of my major that I pursued in half the time. But uh, my father taught me. And my father taught music at Venice High from 1951 to 1955. 
a lot of people didn't know that. Know. My father taught Steve Williams, he taught Bruce Slaughter, he taught Barry Slaughter, he taught me, he taught lots and lots of wind players. So I owe my musical background to my father who taught me 35 years after I got out of college and was well into my career, my son wanted to play. So my father passed that to me, I taught my son, my son dropped off, I started playing again about 15 years ago or so, and I ended up being principal trumpet in a symphony orchestra. I'm, I'm since, I don't have the time to practice, I'm, I'm second trumpet now, but my father, after he retired from, from teaching at Emerson Junior High, was emeritus, emeritus conductor for the San Monica Emeritus Band until he was 84. He retired at age 84, he's still alive, he's 95. And you can't imagine how many of the crescendos, there are other crescendos that he taught. He said, tell everybody I said hi. So he's got somebody that, that's, yeah, the, lead, the, lead, the leader of the band. Yeah, so my, my music wasn't my, wasn't my career, it's a passion, it's a wonderful thing. Um, my father, my father was a, a great musician, a great teacher. Wow. Say hi, Dad. What an honor. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Love you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Right? So, the idea, primarily, is for those people that you remember, that you give a shout out to that didn't make it to me. So, we're going to put it on YouTube. And so, and also, just give us a little story about Venice High School, because one picture would not be able to tell your story, right? <laughs> Tom? Right? So, what, what, I, can't, I can't see it anyway. I, I can't see it anyway. What is she doing? Give us a story. How did you, you guys are married? Yeah. Story? How'd you meet? Oh, God. You're not I was sitting on his Start fence, and he told me that you're not supposed to sit on the fence. Where was we his fence? His fence? His house. Good actually, for him. <laughs> actually, I was visiting his next door neighbor, and I was waiting for her to come out, and his little sister and his little sister were talking to me, so we sat on the fence, and he came out not realizing I wasn't one of the I have nothing to say. I didn't know you always did. At least there's that. <laughs>
Because these 30 girls hung out together, so you got to have one or two good stories. Okay, well, we all, Debbie and I hung out together. We were in chalets. We're twins. We hung out together. Ron played basketball and baseball. He's 19 months older than us. And I'm Debbie's husband, Gary, from Tennessee, Maryville, Tennessee. He's a photo bomber. He's a photo bomber. And we used to hang around outside of the administration building, and there were 30 of us that hung around together. And there you go. That's going to say I remember the chalets. They woke us up very early, like 6 o'clock in the morning, and took us to this mall in Santa Monica and made us get down on our knees and roll peanuts with our nose. That was initiation. <laughs> Okay, first of all, we got to do this. It's simple enough to do. Does everybody know their name? Yes. So let's start with you. What is your name? What year? What year? Summer 69. You? Toby, Summer 69. Woohoo! 68. You got a name? Summer. Sandra. You got a name? Sandra. Okay, all right. Gloria, Summer 69. Rachel, Winter, winter 69. Mary, Winter 69. Okay. She's sitting down. That's why we can't see her. Okay. Yep. Kathy, Summer 69. Good. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to be like the Dick Clark show. Gloria, winner 70. I get that, winner 69. Winner 69, American Bandstand. <laughs> okay, now that we got everybody identified. Better, 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 better. I needed two lights, but this will work. I remember you. I was a boy. Okay, so we got to move to the light. Go to the light? Go to the light. That, I thought we weren't supposed to go to the light. Don't go to the light. Joy, hurry. We got one more coming. Somebody stop me and grab my shoulder. Somebody stop me. Go to the light. Get closer. Come on, there's a reunion. Reun. You know, okay. don't be shy. All right, okay. That's so. close? That's well, it's close. a wide That's angle. Close. Wait till you see what it looks We're like. We're like a Monet. We're better from a distance. <laughs> okay. Oh All right, so we're, we're shooting live video, and we just want you to introduce yourselves and give some Hello. stories I'm about it. I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture afterwards. Drink. Okay, so what's your name? What's your name? Year? Much? First year. What am I supposed to do? Name. Name. Oh, I left to it. I, I remember you. Year? You do. 69. Yes. Shirley Blazer. 69. Estelle. Oh, Estelle Belanakis, 69. Patty Ziello, 69. All right. So, do, do any of you gals remember 
the first girls' pants day. First girls. We could. We weren't allowed we to wear pants. Never allowed to wear pants. Never were allowed to wear pants. Okay. Okay. No, A Miss Hirschberg story. Miss Hirschberg. She. She uh, expelled me from school two weeks before graduation for a oh, short no skirt. Because when we had, had to kneel on the ground. Because we kneel on the ground. Oh, I bet you that went over well at the barber shop. They loved us. They looked for us every morning. Hello. Oh, God. Do you know which one? Right there on Venice and Beethoven. Just the famous one. Jess's barber shop. That's the story I was looking for. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, I got more of those. cleaners. There you go. Okay, you wanted your picture. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Start it again. Wait, wait, wait. All right. So again, is this is wait is this story is this story summer sixty or summer seventy? No, we were in junior high. No, we were in. Uh, remember when we went to Chris Line? Yes. Oh my That's God! Right. And we all smoked pot for the first time. I bought pot and I drank a little bit of alcohol and we kept yeah and we kept saying we weren't high and we talked about not being high for about like an hour. And then nobody could find their keys. That we only would let your mom because she was the coolest mom. Because she didn't give a shit. My mom would be my mom would be beating us. I was standing I was sitting there shaking the seeds out of the pot. We used to have to do that. The no, no, no. The stuff my gr son grows now. I'm such a good home. swimmer. Oh my god. It's like, mom, you've done this for us. I'm kidding. Yeah. His stuff is clean. There's not a lot of seeds in it. My favorite is called Orange Crush. I really like the 818. <laughs> oh, you guys win. The best video of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we grow up. Are you doing the video? I just rubbed it in my foot because I get a little arthritis for my hands. Oh my god. Why are you doing it? I mean, it's a good He recorded it? Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> what do you think? We're rolling video. As a pastor, I'm not accustomed to talking, but I'll give it my best shot. We went to different high schools together. This is a mixed marriage. I went to Venice, she went to Colbert, and I knew a guy in high school named Jimmy Fernandez. Best kid I ever met. And I'm hoping that he edits this to look really good. I think it would be fun. It's like the man on the street. Yeah, it's like the man on the street. With a thousand year old man with no books. How can you go wrong? I don't even know who we are. There's just I once said to my one-legged wife, I said, Peg. <laughs> can we get him to interview some people? This guy's a liar. I do that every Sunday. <laughs> I am, come on down. <laughs> All right, let me take a picture real quick. Good for you, buddy. All right, rolling. Uh, kind of hiding out for my wife when I bumped into you down there in Costa Rica, but <laughs> <laughs> this is my buddy. Yeah, where, see you where people went to hang, to to hide out. <laughs> yes, sir. Four walls in a bar, baby. No, no, Tony's here? Yes. Oh, I gotta go and I him. said, I, I said, go because of you guys, we got to play. Remember that? That's right. Tommy Swan, I bought for him. Great quarterback. just followed him around all night. Oh, I like you thinking, Mike. How is that, boy? I like you thinking, Mike. Wait a second. Yeah. I do have a story. I have a story on Saturday. All right. We were all ready for the game. Uh, and we had this stuff on your eyes. Wait a second. Wait, wait, you got to stand over here. Tell us the whole story. Move into the like, light. I want him in my picture. Yeah, yeah. No. Come on, work the light. Come on. 
Come on, Cotton. You know to work the light. Get in the light or I can't see it. There you go. There you go. Oh, it looks good. One of the greatest quarterbacks I've had to block for him. Is that right? And one time we had a guy in Mitch Sullivan. He was a halfback. Before a game, Tommy was ready to go. He had the tape, he had the black stuff, and Sullivan walks over and gives him one of these. Oh, I remember that. I don't know what they're talking about, I know, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I want to know. <laughs> okay, so is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to that didn't attend the, the reunion from your... Yeah, sure. Okay, say hi, because we're going to put it on YouTube now. Oh, okay. Hi, Bob and Holly. Where the hell are you? Yeah. Hi, Bob and Holly. Bob and Renee. Bob and Renee, where are you? Bob and Renee. You missed this. Okay. <laughs> See you next time. Okay. See you next time. Bye. That's what Okay. Richard, how you doing, bro? I don't have to <laughs> no. No, you know. So Tell I need yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I really the Okay, we're rolling. Okay, so tell this story. Okay. So we all know there's no hospital in Venice. Right. This guy is probably the only person born, actually born, in Venice. Really? Seriously? He's going to give his story now. Uh, all right. Call yourself Venetians. <laughs> I love it. I think you're just posers. <laughs> because I was born in Venice, born and raised in Venice. Everybody can say born and raised in Venice, but that's not the truth. Because they were born in Santa Monica, Culver City, LA, Inglewood. Okay? I was born at 225 Holland Canal. April 1st, 1952, my grandmother delivered me in her kitchen, so, so there it is, so, so if anybody else can claim not to be a poser, I want you to come forward and show me that, alright? This is fun. Okay, okay, so this is a 50th reunion, you were 68. When are 68? Close enough. Okay. No, winter 60, I'm winter, winter 69. I'm sorry. I'm 68 winter. years old. We stopped. We no, I'm not that old. We stopped keeping score. So wait, because you're younger than me. Because I'm summer 69. So I'm winter 69. But I, I skipped the grade. When did you turn 68? I turned 69. Ah, March 23rd. Oh. So I'm two, two months and a week older. Oh, really? But then you're all He moved from Texas. But he went earlier. Yeah. Oh. With, yeah. Oh, I came came okay. to California and they did these. I don't know if it was IQ test or some kind of equivalent to test. Okay. The whole school took it. And the teacher said, "We've got two guys here that are near geniuses. Uh, really? One's the smartest kid in the class, which was me because I got straight A's. And the other, well, she didn't want to go into it, but he was the worst." I saw him pick up a guitar and just play. I go, oh man, how long you been playing? I mean, that's the kind of intelligence he had. So it was like he just figured stuff out on his own, but he wouldn't study. So he was one of these classic underachievers. Well, I was probably a classic overachiever. And so that's what I've done most of my life. Johnny for the money, the borrow. The, the, I was an actor and I was a screenwriter. Yeah. But just like exceeded because you're not a In a sense, I guess, I don't know if it's confidence because I think it was early years. I came from a. Uh, I was smart and everything like that, but I, my family was a bunch of people. From Kentucky, you know, from Appalachia. Literally. So there was a lot of shame and guilt and, you know. Not, not, not good enough. Right. I, I had to wear hand me down for my father. 
<laughs> I mean, that's pretty bad, man. You know, you know, we're hanging out from the I'm very good. And everything. So a lot of my life was about having fist fights with people. Just to be showing that, you know, it's not a system. You're not going to push me around. Right. And my dad was a boxer. My uncle was a boxer. So oh, as a result. Wow. Okay, so you so learned how to fight. Yeah. Stand up for yourself. Yeah, exactly. So I did a lot of that. So I was kind of like this smart guy. Well, you had the both. You had the were smart. Fighting that was part of the culture. Yeah. yeah. And then it you, worked in your favor. And I grew up a block off of the Venice Canal. So oh. Heavy, heavy yeah. Yeah. So that, was, that kind of swallowed me up. And eventually I came out the other side. And I've been a pretty much old man So yeah, it's something I worry about because I have three adult sons. started going in, I almost cried. Oh, yeah, and people would say to me, you look to him, Johnny, you got to buy a car from the kids. And, you know, they have a God, too. You know, so, you know, just let them find it. And they did, they've been great. I'm very proud of them. People say, well, one lives in Sherman Oaks. Yeah, I live in Sherman Oaks, too. One lives in Panama City. Oh, the other one lives in Glendale and uh, Sierra Madre. He's got a girlfriend. He's like, I, was, I think he's living in the But he, you know, he takes my part. And what, now, what did you do? Charlie yeah. Remember Charlie? Of course. Get in the, the shot, Charlie. Charlie. Go to the light. Charlie, Charlie knows Charlie. Bob. Yeah. All right. So I need all three of you guys. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, this is John Young, man. Yeah. Are you guys remember me at all? Yeah. Take my jacket off. Should I take my jacket off? Oh, get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. No, no. I just need you all in the shot. Sure. I'm taking my jacket off. Oh, God. You should have heard me. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, you're called down. You can't pay for it. Yeah? Oh, it was, it was priceless. Okay, so I need you all in the shot. I need you on the shot. John? I know. I oh, Rocky. Rocky grew up next to me. No way! Rocky, oh, no way. Rocky lived on... Rocky lived on my... Are you on my... Hey, Rocky! Hey, Charlie! Yeah, man. <laughs> Remember you by. She speaks, I recognize her. I to talk to you. John! Coolest guy ever! I'll tell you, man. The smartest guy. I'd be walking home from the field. He'd pull off on his bike. Hey, want to ride? Ride down to my head. I want to back to his locker. I can to get his books. He'd be riding my locker.
like what you look like. Yeah, it was so nice. You guys. <laughs> so Charlie and I were in a speech class together, Mr. Schmidt. Remember Mr. Schmidt? Oh. So we had a speech that was due the next morning, and I'm on the bus going to school, and I had forgotten, but I, I had a, I had my toothpaste and a toothbrush with me in a cup. I, was, I didn't know what to do for the speech. That's a so start. We get. Oh, you started? No, I said that's a start. So anyway, so, so I get to a class, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just get up on stage like this. And go, so our speech today, I'm going to tell you about how to properly brush your teeth. And I do the thing, so I squirt the sand. So you do it on this and this, and you do it. And you go, and then you go, and I'm doing it. And then you go, and then you go, and then and that's all I do the whole damn time. See, he forgot his speech. This is genius. <laughs> See what I mean? And this I is a genius. <laughs> I spit it out and I said, and that's how you brush your teeth. Got a huge applause and, and Schmidt gave me an A. So about two, two, about two weeks later, you did something and he complimented you and said, and Charlie is a great writer. Then he looked at me and he goes, and John is a great writer too. And I thought, from yeah. the toothpaste? <laughs> from the so faking it, the toothpaste. Faking it, exactly. So anyway. <laughs> So Charlie, and Charlie's sitting there, and you can see the glimmer in his eye, because he always had a glimmer in his eye. And he played every instrument, right? No, just trumpet. Just, just trumpet. trumpet? No, you, no, you played something else. No. In the beginning, you didn't trumpet. Play. Trumpet, trumpet, trumpet. That's why I was always afraid of getting hit. You played good for the camera. Yeah, right. <laughs> in the lift, yeah. I keep the hit for a minute. Trumpet. <laughs> so, so Rocky used to dance a lot at uh, Country Joe's. Hey, man, last time I said that, I went down to Cabo San Lucas. And I walked in this coolest little bar. I mean, I'm telling you, about one of the coolest bars I've ever seen in my life. Who, who owns it? Jim Fernandez. I walk in, he's in there with his uh, condos, right? Just, you know, he's the entertainment, man. You go in, look cool music, booze, pretty girls, look at Thomas and Lucas, they just walk in, you know. They wander around, I wouldn't call them bikinis, two band-aids and a quirk. Woo! <laughs> or, or dental floss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it, was, it was the coolest little bar I've ever been in, man. And I walk in here, my old buddy from Venice Island. I'm like, what are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I, so he owned this little bar, the coolest bar I've ever been in my life. Love that bar, man. He outgrew it and closed it down. Too bad. <laughs> now we got to go to Cabo San Lucas. Where, 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 where are we going now? I don't know. I wouldn't know what embarrassing thing happened to Tina. Oh, 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 oh,
keep talking. This guy. Keep talking, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they said it wouldn't happen again. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I want to hear another crest line. I want to hear another uh, big bear story. Okay. When we are on the crest line, I made a snowball. Yeah. I made a snowball. All right, one story at a time. <laughs> Tina's snowball story first. Yeah. All right, here we go. I made a snow cone out of snow, and there was there was alcohol in the bus, and I I made you know I drank it and I ate it. Are we in intermission? I got in trouble. Should we be squeezing harder? I bet. I bet you got in trouble. Yeah, I got in trouble. But you look so innocent. I'm sure you got out of trouble, right? I just drank and joined Joy Lobster. I did. Wait. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's go. 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 let us go Crest line. Okay. I was grounded. All right. The crest line story. Another crest line story, because I know there was more than one. Then there was your sleepover when we all snuck out. John and Lucky saw me off. The whistle called the time. Just six days out to the coast. Just six days behind. But I've seen every state since then And where my boys have gone Is known to God and for strong winds And I'm here all alone Ten long years have somehow passed Since I've seen my hometown And times I've spent upon those streets And faint familiar sounds Still whisper gently in my ear And play upon my eyes And I hand hold these memories Till one by one they die but I still belong to everyone And if my sleep allows Well then I'll be running wild tonight With all of my old pals Still the passing trains And I wonder what they see And somewhere's out my window Are the places that I might be Now I'm chasing down those pretty girls They wander through my mind Maybe they'll remember me When I work off my time but I still belong to everyone And if my sleep allows Well then all those girls will dance tonight With me and my old pals But I'm running every single night And every single day Lord, I've tried everything I know To somehow find my way Back to that one place in time That fond memory of doubt 